We do want to thank you for taking the time to attend our presentation, Best Practices in Joining an HIE, How to Make Your Connection Work for You. Our speaker today is Rob English. Rob's the Director and Senior Consultant of Iatric Systems Professional Services. Rob is responsible for a wide range of project management and implementation projects across all IT platforms. His background includes extensive implementation, programming, and integration experience with EMPIs, including IBM Initiate and integration engines such as Cloverleaf. Rob has over 20 years of healthcare experience. Now I'd like to turn it over to him to get us started. Thanks, Chris, and um, thanks again for you guys joining today. Um, that's really not my picture. I just stole it off the internet, so I don't know who that guy is, but um, <laughs> we'll just go with it. Uh, again, best practices in joining an HIE, how to make your connection work for you. Today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about how to control your patient data, um, why it's important to control that data, and how it's going to be represented outside your four walls, um, what's required to have com complete data um, when you do send it and when you want to receive data back from an HIE, and how real-life organizations have gained control of the data and how they are realizing results and helping patients. So, some, um, it, it will be more in the Q&A on some of the sites we've worked with, such as some of the sites in New York, um, some in Florida, some in Texas, some in um, uh, Idaho and Missouri, so we can have uh, a little more open discussion. If you guys have uh, distinct, uh, distinct questions on that, I can certainly uh, answer those for you. So. Goals today are our goals of, of controlling your data. You know, provider organizations who join an HA or other connected community see many benefits. Obviously, um, this is one of the things that's touted by by joining an HIE or by joining a, an organization in which you can get aggregated data is that you receive uh, the benefit of multiple sources that share that clinical information and then aggregate that to give that benefit. the ability to send formats or make changes to your data before you do send that out, and how you can integrate that back into your EMR if that's what you're working with at your site so that you can provide a seamless um, experience for a provider in that sense. Why controlling patient data is important. How and where do I send my data? Who, who is going to see this? Am I sending complete and accurate information that can help coordinate care across the community uh, with many participants outside your organization? So, you know, who, who else belongs to the HIE that you may be contributing data to? And, um, you know, if you, if you don't know all of them, then, then try and get to know your partners. Be a, uh, an active part of that HIE so that you can see what types of data they're sending, what benefits you would receive from that data, um, or other things that an HIE may be able to provide for you. And is your data helping others provide care to patients? Um, obviously, we want to... Uh, receive information back from the community that can help us with a specific patient. So a lot of times, uh, you know, patients will go in and, and it'll have information uh, uh, from other providers of notes and history, multiple visits at different locations. We want to get all that information consolidated and get that back into your system to help those providers that you have. Why controlling patient data is important to success? How is that data going to be utilized outside? Uh, is it for referral networks? Um, is it routing of labs, radiology, or transcriptions? Uh, a lot of times we, uh, an HIE may receive lab results from a reference lab, and uh, it, they may be unsolicited. You know, they, they may not know, the HIE itself may not know 
a specific medical record number, a specific patient for that data, but they want to be able to match that up. So they, again, the aggregation of results without actually having an order. Um, you know, patient summaries, is your, are the patient summaries you're sending or receiving, your discharge summaries, how are those utilized within the HIE and how would you receive those back? Uh, different documents, CCD, CD, CDA type documents that could be shared across that HIE, um, what you have the ability to share and what you have the ability to receive and then what you can do with that information once you do get it back. And uh, radiology imaging, that's a, 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 I'll say, neat thing for an HIE where they can it, display those images from any facility that participates in that HIE so that you can pull up a viewer, see that image, uh, provider can look at that. Uh, they don't necessarily have to have a hard copy. They don't necessarily have to have a disk that comes to them or anything like that. They can just pull it up through that electronic medical record out on the HIE itself if it's available. And then how do others get data back to me? Um, what can I expect from an HIE and what format? Um, when you're working with an HIE as a provider, you're nine times out of ten, you're going to have some work to do. So you will have something to do in order to send the data out to maybe transform uh, that data into something that that HIE can consume, or you may have to do something when that data comes back to you. So you're going to have to transform that data into something else or some uh, form or fashion in order to get that into your EMR system. So there is something to do with that data, and then if it is aggregated data, um, you know, you're, you're going to want to do something with that within your EMR, either discreetly display it or display it as a document itself. So the ability to receive that information safe and secure and timely manner in multiple formats. So when you, when you join an organization such as an HIE or with you want to share your data, obviously there's some, some large steps and then some, some very uh, small steps and more technical steps that you would need to take. Uh, data sharing agreements, obviously that's the, the first step. You know, wh what do I do uh, to join your organization, to join an HIE? What business associate agreements do I have to have in place? How is PHI shared? How is it protected? What are the legal steps? What are do's and don'ts for the HIE itself? Um, you know, how is consent viewed? Is it a state level consent? Do I share? Do I go across multiple states with consent? And how would that be held within the system itself? Uh, those types of things. And then, does your HIE partner keep the data in house, or is it more of a federated model where it's uh, basically queried upon request, so it's not necessarily stored at the HIE level or within a database there, it's just queried upon your system. They know where it lives and they can come get it when they do need it. So um, just some of the larger steps before you join an organization, before you join an HIE, in order to make sure you got everything in place bef uh, before you start sending the data itself. And then other things to consider is the unique identifier to your system or your source, uh, single patient identifier. So um, in that instance, you know how how does the the HIE utilize a single source medical record number from your facility? Is that the medical record number, or is that an EMPI number or URN number within your system? How are they going to utilize that? How is that going to be? Um, uh, used within the HIE itself. What happens if there's duplicates within the HIE? How is that managed? So you have some some uh, data governance documents that you want to make sure you're in agreement with. Who gets to manage uh, the remediation process? Who gets to adjudicate those types of records? And then what will they share back with you? Will they give you um, information back that says, hey, we found two duplicates in your system that you may not have known about that you can go and then correct and send up a transaction to actually merge those within the HIE itself. So lots of things from an EMPI level. Uh, 
and then the other thing is a corporate EMPI in the event of multiple uh, systems at your organization. You, you may have an organization that has multiple uh, facilities and you in turn have a corporate EMPI. How do you manage that and how will that enterprise ID be sent up to the HIE if that is uh, in in the, if that is the case, and then what happens from a linkage perspective? Uh, obviously, within medical record numbers, they can uh, they shouldn't change. That's a single source, but EMPI numbers they can change, uh, and they can be linked uh, and and receive a different medical uh, enterprise ID number. So, how is that going to be shared? Just some bigger things that you may want to think about: uh, patient demographics, um, those types of things that can be. Uh, something you want to consider when joining an HIE and having control of your data. So what's required or what do I need? Some of the items that help me control my data as I want to share it or receive it from an HIE. Obviously an interface engine or a message broker. Own the movement of the messages inbound and outbound so that you're in control of what gets sent out or comes back in and can actually transform that if needed, either in or out. Owning your own interface engineering and having the access to um, create those connections, that, that certainly helps. And then having sufficient work knowledge of all the connection types that can be handled within an HIE itself. Obviously, HL7 version 2, very uh, somewhat easy to get. Uh, sent out and come back in, then you have HL7, maybe V3, you have web services, you have IHE profiles, RESTful APIs, query response, all those types of things that you may want to have that uh, working knowledge within your facility so that you can get those connections quickly and get those coming back in quickly also. So again, uh, nine times out of ten, you will have something to do when you do connect, and that's part of the control itself so that you can do something as you send it out or do something as you bring back in that data. And by having that in-house expertise, uh, obviously it will reduce your development and connect connection time with an exchange uh, or a connected community. Uh, the big ones are uh, most uh, of the network services that may be uh, handled with that, such as VPNs or firewall activities that may have to happen on your side and with the HIE itself. And then uh, just interface engineers for developing specific interfaces. You may have to create a new interface to an HIE. It may be a profile that you've never used before that you have to create a new interface. Um, just all those types of things that you may want to think about when you do want to share your data or when you do want to receive data. And then realizing the results. Obviously, um, you, you know, you want to re get the results of an aggregated um, record when you do connect to a connected community or an HIE. And you can cut, cut down on the duplicate testing or duplicate procedures. And then you, you want to get a better patient history from all the providers that a patient may see, may have seen. Um, I know you may, uh, patients may come in It also helps from an HIE perspective to see, you know, it, from a fraud perspective, uh, Social Security numbers that may be used across multiple folks uh, at multiple locations, or uh, patients may go to different emergency rooms uh, uh, across the geographic area that your HIE or your connected community works with, and you know, they're they're mainly seekers, right, looking for something, and you can certainly. Uh, review that, your HIE can help you with that and look at those types of things. It also, um, realizing results, 
it cuts down on your point-to-point -point interfaces. So when you connect to an HIE, they've already set up the, the pipe work behind that, and so they're receiving transactions and, and data from multiple sources, and it's for you, it's a one connection, and I get a lot of information back. So you receive a lot of benefit without a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of point-to-point -point interfaces to do all these things. Um, and then uh, another benefit is results routing, to get results um, automatically routed if your HIE can provide that. So if a, if a provider within your facility is a consulting doctor or has seen a patient and that patient goes somewhere else and has another test, that provider can be notified that, hey, there is a result and that can be automatically sent to the EMR and that provider could pull that up in their EMR and see that result itself. Other results that we see, ERH, uh, EHR, EMR, integration and interoperability. So standards-based protocols, uh, the, the, the IET profiles, those types of things. Um, and then what happens when you do receive a consolidated or aggregated TCD um, or record can you consume that within your EHR or EMR? Is that something that is uh, consumable from a discrete level and you want to see discrete results go into your EMR? Or is that just a viewable document and could be just the PDF that comes up that a provider can look at and they see that and can go through all the information there? So um, there are multiple ways to do that EHR or EMR integration through the um, HIE itself. The second is, uh, or the other is, EMPI consolidation at the HIE. So the HIE itself should be able to identify and manage the entities across all the sources of information they receive for a specific patient. So if a patient goes to 10 facilities and yours happens to be one of them, then that should be aggregated at the HIE level from a single entity. So in my case, it could be Rob English has gone to ha and had 10 different visits and now at 10 different facilities and now you want to see that information also, that should be aggregated at the HIE level itself or the connected community itself. Uh, another thing on the EMPIs itself, just as an FYI, when you do look at um, either your HIE or if you're looking for a corporate EMPI itself is, you know, it, 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 <clears throat> how does that EMPI actually work? Is it a probabilistic algorithm? Is it a deterministic algorithm? Or is it both? And there are systems out today that are both probabilistic and deterministic and do a great job of helping with the business process on the, on the back end with some of that. And data quality, is the data you're providing clean and duplicate uh, free? And by that, you know, we're looking at things like, when I say bogus values, do you provide anonymous uh, items within demographics? Do you provide baby or John Doe or 1900-0101 as a date of birth? Those types of things within your data. Um, those aren't easy to aggregate or match on from an entity perspective at the HIE level, and so, that's, that's really disparate records when it goes up there. And then is your data that you're trying to provide, are there duplicates within your data? So do you have duplicate uh, patients with m multiple MRNs within your system? And then, you know, what can you do about that? Do you know about it? You, some folks don't even know about it before they join an HIE, and the HIE or Connected Community basically says, you're sending us a lot of duplicates or you're sending us a lot of transactions and we have a lot of uh, records in here that potentially match up. What do you want us to do about that? Um, so it's just good to know your data before you start sending that up there itself. And then how will you or the connected community reconcile and remediate data um, or your data within the system or outside your system at the HIE level? So Obviously, within your system, you, want, you don't want duplicate medical record numbers on the same person, um, so you would want to, uh, to uh, 
correct those before they get sent out. But you also want to know what the HIE itself is doing in order to make those linkages or corrections and how they're identifying those types of things. So how you reconcile, how you remediate, does the HIE have a data governance document? Do you as an organization have a data governance doc document? It just helps to keep that data as, as clean and, and good quality as possible before it gets sent out. Um, one of the things we do is we have taken data and we um, it's basically demographic data with medical record numbers and we'll take in that information and we will um, provide you a duplicate rate. So if you want to send this information from your EMR with all the medical record numbers and patient demographics, we'll take that and run it through our algorithm and tell you what your duplicate rate is. So that's something we do. We do that for free. And so um, it just gives you a better idea if you don't know what your duplicate rate is or what kind of bogus values you may have out there. It's just something we can do for you and give you a better idea. So a little bit of a summary. Know your HIE and what its goals are. So, you know, who who is participating? Who else is in that HIE that you want to participate with? Um, you want to know your partners. You want to know what kind of information you may get back. What kind of reference labs may be there? What kind of other um, uh, participants could be in there? Sustainability of the HIE itself. Obviously, we've read through the news about sustainability of certain HIEs. Um, you know, grant funding is kind of gone, so they need to be sustaining on their own with some type of uh, cost model that helps sustain themselves so that you can remain connected and receive that aggregated data. And then the other is, is, is a vendor platform. What type of platform are they on? There's multiples out there. You have Orion, you have InterSystems, you have Medicity, you have Mirth. So there's lots of vendor platforms out there um, that HIEs can stand up and help you uh, especially if you need a patient, por uh, patient portal, a provider portal, um, if you want direct, those types of things will help with the vendor platform. And then what you will need to do as a participant, you know, obviously you're going to provide the connectivity, the VPN that's going to get uh, turned on to that specific connected community. Um, you're going to provide information across that tunnel. What types of data do you want to provide or do they need from you, such as ADTs, ORUs, radi radiologies, transcriptions, any kind of IT profile interaction, APIs, those types of things. And then the big one is what's your staff involvement? Uh, how much interfacing will your staff have to do? Will they have to make any transformations to send data? Will they have to make any transformations to receive data? Is there any testing involved from your staff? Is there any MPI work from your staff? Obviously, there could be remediation at the HIE level, and there could be remediation within your um, site itself. Other key points to, to make sure you recognize are, are how is your data housed and protected? Uh, you know, it, it is PHI. There are certain legal ramifications around prote protecting that, so you want to make sure those are all in place. Data centers. How secure are those data centers? How redundant are those data centers? Those types of things. Consent is a big one. Opt in, opt out. Is everyone in until they opt out? Is everyone out until they opt in? Obviously, both models have advantages and disadvantages. And then audit itself. How is any interaction audited within the HIE? Um, how is actions that are taking taken from, or, or how are, is logging occurring if I re make a request to an HIE to pull out information, those types of things. And how will you get access to a consolidated, aggregated record? Through a portal? So it's just a log on to a web page that I see information? Or will I actually get that back in my EMR as part of the integrated or CCD exchange? And again, I just wanted to throw this one up. A lot of people have asked about this because some people don't know how good is my data? How do I have a lot of duplicates? Do I have a lot of 
um, duplicate medical record numbers. And again, free analysis, we can contact you, you can contact us. My email's there, phone number, um, certainly something we can provide for you. And then I think now we'll just open it up for a little Q&A and hopefully we'll have some questions. All right, just a reminder that you can enter your questions in the questions pane of your control panel. And also to let you know, as people are typing, also to let you know that we will be sending out this presentation so you can share it with, with members of your team uh, if you need to. Rob, we did have one. Is it okay for us to use our EMPI even if the HIE also uses an EMPI? Sure. Um, there's, there's a few things you want to consider. Uh, if you do have your own EMPI, are you going to share your EMPI number? So you've already actually consolidated patients within your facility. Um, and are you going to share your EMPI number outside with that? Or do you still want to share your medical record number? Um, there's advantages with both. There's disadvantages with both. Um, the advantage of sharing your EMPI, you've already consolidated. You know that record. And <clears throat> you've cleaned up your system itself if you share that EMPI. The disadvantage of that is if you do share that EMPI number within the EMPIs itself, that EMPI number may change over time. A lot of the systems such as your IBMs or your next gates, um, they have auto linking that can create a linkage between records as they come in and as that as the system's been set up that will then that could then update that uh, enterprise ID. So that needs to be shared back with the HIE itself to keep things in sync. Uh, the MRN itself, if you share the MRN outside, you could see that it, the HIE itself, if it has a better EMPI, could actually um, detect more duplicates within your system. So that it might find duplicates that you didn't see or your EMPI didn't identify. So that could be an advantage of sharing the medical record number. Obviously, the disadvantages are that you've actually consolidated on your side, and so you're either receiving back information where it's gotten consolidated again. Um, so it's a it's a little difficult to keep that straight in your system versus the outside system. So good question. Great. Another one. I'm assuming there's a move to a national HIE, and at that point, how do we keep up with knowing who's in the HIE? <laughs> well, uh, at some point, there will, there should be a uh, national HIE, you would think, um, and you would hope that there would be some type of national EMPI or registry to help keep up with not only the patients themselves, so there should be a distinct way to identify patients or persons within that, but also who participates in that exchange itself. So, you know, if you're the only one in your geographic region that's participating in a national HIE, it's not really helpful you for you yet as an agri as a um, as an an EMR in Texas if all you get is information from Chicago or New York area. So um, I, I'm not sure when they're going to move to that and, and how long it will take to move to that. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions that I see right now. Okay. We'll leave it open a couple more seconds here and see if anyone has anything else. And I can give you, while it, you guys may be thinking of other questions, just some of the, the, the systems we've worked with, uh, some of the HIEs itself. So um, up in the New York area, um, we worked with several HIEs up there on different platforms. N4 was a platform that we integrated with, and those integrated with several different types of EMRs, such as your uh, Meditech. Um, it had uh, ECW, Allscripts, um, Greenway, those types of things. So uh, it, there are a variety of EMRs out there that then connected to the New York HIEs. Um, that platform, a lot of the platforms up there, again, InterSystems and Mirth were some of the platforms we worked with up there on the New York HIEs. Another one was Missouri. That was a very large facility, uh, or uh, HIE itself. 
and that connected with again the the Meditex, the Epics, the Greenways, some of your smaller ones, some of your ECW, some of your smaller EMR vendors. So we had I I want to say about 17 or 18 different EMR vendors that had connected to a single exchange. That exchange has grown to about 13 million um, persons within their EMPI itself. So it's a fairly large exchange. That one's kind of different and unique because it has it's more of a federated model, so it knows where the information lives. They don't really store that information at a uh, central location. They just go get it when it's needed. So that's just another large HIE that we've worked with out there. Any other questions? I don't see any more. All right. Well, thank you guys, and hopefully this was uh, somewhat informative for you when you do want to share your information and what you can expect to receive back when you do share information.